Hey, in this video, I'd like to introduce you to a basic concept called the momentum. Um, and in this video, I'm going to give a very short conceptual introduction. And then I'm going to give you some examples. Um, the examples are going to be quantitative because momentum is a quantification of something about mass and motion together. So it's quantitative. That is, you're going to have to imagine sometimes using a calculator to do these um, calculations. But some, you know, a lot of the calculations in this class at this level, um, you can do in your head without a calculator. Uh, and you'll see that below. So Let's start with an introduction, a conceptual introduction. Momentum is a quantity that summarizes a combination of thinking about the object's mass as well as its motion. So we put those two details together. So it's about mass and it's about motion. So mass has for us in this class, we use the unit of the kilogram, right? And sometimes I can draw a little circular mass or a square mass or a car, right? These are each objects with certain amounts of mass. We can have an entire planet like Earth. And each of these objects has different amounts of mass, right? You, you might say, like, what if this thing, this first thing was like an atom or something like that, right? So this, this little thing is very, very low mass, but if it's moving, it can have some momentum. And let's say this square thing is actually a brick. So, you know, a brick that makes up a building. And this brick is not very massive. It's a lot less massive than a car, but it's more mass than an atom. But an atom can have momentum. A brick can have momentum. An automobile can have momentum. A person can have momentum. The entire earth can have momentum. Our sun can have momentum, right? Because each of these things has mass and those things can be imagined to have different kinds of motions. So let's talk about motion for a second. Whenever we talk about the motion of any object, including an atom, a brick, a car, or an earth, we talk about speed, right? Some number of meters per second, say, those are the units, just like kilograms is the unit of mass. But we also need to describe direction because remember that one important thing that I want very much to happen in our class is to understand that if you put speed and direction together, this we refer to as velocity. And it is true that a car can have velocity. It can also stand still and have no velocity or that velocity equals to zero. The earth can be moving fast or it can be moving slow. It can be moving in different directions, right? It can be moving towards the right for a little while and then turn around and move towards the left because of an acceleration. And its speed, right? The earth speed, the, an atom on the earth speed, a brick on the earth, right? All of those things can vary, right? But momentum is a quantity that does a summarization of both the mass and the motion together. Momentum is, a, is this interesting mixture of mass and motion. So here is the idea. So the simplest first combination of thinking about mass and thinking about motion together as momentum is to take the mass take the velocity and simply multiply them, right? So mass times velocity 
is what is momentum. So let me erase these bottom things. Okay, mass times velocity. So let's do some examples. So this is, right, remember I said it's a quantitative thing. And sometimes you have to imagine using a calculator in order to calculate the momentum of a moving massive object. So let's do that. Some examples. We're going to take a mass and we're going to look for its motion and we're going to calculate the momentum. So here's an example of a five kilogram object whose motion is 10 meters per second, right? That's its speed towards the right. Do you see that? And so if I take the mass, which is five kilograms, and multiply by the velocity, which is 10 meters per second towards the right, then the momentum, I'll just put a column over here. So the momentum is five kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, or not per, per second squared, but just 10 meters per second towards the right. And this turns out to be, right, five times 10 is 50. And the units, there's nothing to do with the units except for bring them all with us. So it's 50 kilograms, meters per second, and there's a multiplication. And the answer also includes the direction because momentum is a vector quantity. Both the magnitude, 50 kilograms meters per second is the magnitude, and the direction are important. In this case, it's towards the right. So let's go down and calculate the momentum of the second thing. Seven kilogram object is moving at three meters per second upwards. The momentum is seven times three is 21, right? 21. The units are kilograms. That comes from the mass times meters per second comes from the speed and the direction is upwards. So I'll just put an upwards arrow. You could alternatively, right, in this case, it's also equally valid to say that it's up. So in this case, let's put it upwards. And I have one more example of calculating the momentum. I have, in this case, it's a 10 kilogram massive object moving at five meters per second. So this thing, right, if you multiply 10 times five, that's 50. The units are kilograms meters per second because I took mass, which has kilograms units, and multiplied it by velocity, which has speed units, right? And so that's why the units are kilograms times meters per second. The units of momentum is the units of mass times velocity. So, but what's the direction? The direction is left. And I'd like to point out something interesting. Like, it's hard to see both of these things on the screen at the same time, but I'll just remind you, we took a five kilogram object at the beginning that was moving at 10 meters per second towards the right, and we got 50 kilograms meters per second towards the right. In this last example, I have a 10 kilogram object instead moving at the slower speed of five meters per second towards the left. And that's what I got here. And you'll notice that the two momentums, 50 kilograms meters per second in the first case, and 50 kilograms meters per second in the last case, they have the same amount of momentum. So I'll just point out that this one and this one, amounts are the same. But there's an important difference. 
the momentum that we calculated last was headed towards the left. That is, if I look at this physical situation, I have material headed towards the left. I have a lot of kilograms moving at a somewhat small speed towards the left. And up here, I have a somewhat lighter, less inertia, smaller mass object moving quite fast, right? Twice as fast. So half the mass at twice the speed, I end up with the same momentum up here. But it is towards the other direction. So let me summarize a little bit what I'm trying to get across. Let me redraw the five kilogram object. It's moving towards the right at 10 meters per second. And I have this other object, which is a lot more massive. In fact, it's twice as massive. But it is moving at half the speed, right? Five meters per second instead of 10. And these two things have the same amount of momentum, but they are opposite momentums. They're opposite because this one is headed towards the right, and right and left are opposite directions, right? So, so let me write it here, and actually let me type it. So these two things, same amount of momentum, but opposite directions, right? So these two objects, these two objects, uh, a quick way to say this is to say these two objects have opposite momentums, or the plural of momentum is momenta. So these two objects have opposite momenta. Um, you could say that, um, let me uh, go back to the marker. Or the, so we could say that this object here, let's say towards the right is positive, we could summarize the direction with a plus sign and a minus sign. And left, which is the case here, is negative. And we could say that um, the object on the left up here has positive 50 and, uh, kilograms meters per second of momentum and the object on the left instead has negative 50 kilograms meters per second, right? But what, what this assignment of plus and minus does is it just encapsulates the fact that these two things have opposite directions of momentum. Okay.